When I was eight or nine years old, my cousins were doing a pottery class down the road and my mum sent me. From that time, I've always loved to do pottery. I love throwing. I love the feel of the clay, especially porcelain, which is really smooth. I'm not so good at drawing on paper. I can more easily get a lump of clay and make something in three dimensions. So I've always liked making things with my hands. I really like organic shapes like eggs or shells. I like the rough matte outside of the shell and then the inside is pink and shiny. I quite like that kind of contrast. I like to show the hand of the maker in the finished work. So I'll leave throwing lines, I'll put dimples in, just so that people can see that somebody's made it by hand. I like to make a family of pots that are all almost the same, but you can tell that they're handmade because each one is unique. Each thing is thrown on the wheel it only takes a few minutes. If I can make batches and keep making quite quickly and not spend too much time on each one, I can make the price not too high so that people feel they can use it. I often look at textiles and look to see the combinations of colours that textile artists use. I quite like 1950s textiles. It's mostly the mid-century modern era that I'm getting ideas from. In my previous career, I did material science and I think that's really changed how I look at the glazes. I like to make really lovely smooth matte textures. I don't go and buy a mustard yellow. I make it from titanium oxide and nickel oxide. So I've always liked doing the kind of science part, mixing up all the ingredients of the glaze. It's partly like cooking and partly like science. I can still do my research. When I was a scientist, I would write a paper and publish it. But now I'm a potter, I like to put all my recipes in a book and publish that. To get that matte feeling, the ingredient is talc. It's magnesium silicate, and that's ground up soapstone. When you put it in the glaze, you get that lovely matte tactile surface. The one thing I'm trying to do is overlap glazes so that you get a really interesting texture at the interface. You can get striations or drips of a different colour running into the matte glaze. When you're firing in an electric kiln, sometimes the results can be quite static. It's predictable and you know when you open the lid of the kiln, everything will look okay. What you want to do is introduce a bit of uncertainty. And if you try overlapping glazes and doing different combinations, you can get more exciting textures happening. You are bound to get failures, but then you might also discover a new exciting thing. Rare earth oxides are used in mobile phones, catalytic converters, lasers, all kinds of things. Some of my glazes have those oxides in. You could only really get them in the last 10 years. So they're neodymium oxide, praseodymium oxide and erbium oxide. They give you a lime green, a pale purple colour and a pale pink colour. I think it's really important to make work that people feel they can use. I don't really want to make museum pieces that are behind glass. I'd like people to be able to pick my things up and to enhance their breakfast because they've got my lovely mug to pick up. I make things for people to use all the time.